It's early 2008, GTA San Andreas is almost 4 years old and people have been patiently waiting for the next big Grand Theft Auto game. These mobile spin-offs they gave us were great and all and honestly super underrated in the grand scheme of things, but most people just kind of saw them as holdovers for the next real game, Grand Theft Auto 4. Say what you will about this game. I don't fucking care, it's a masterpiece. Before I made this video, I had only completed GTA 4's campaign one time when I was 8 years old, and it had managed to stick with me ever since. If that doesn't speak to the quality of this game's writing, then I don't know what the fuck will. I've always adored this game despite some of its jank and the fact that a lot of the new mechanics established in the last game are now completely gone. And Liberty City is only like half the size of Los Santos, and while I feel like these would be obvious downgrades in the other franchise, here I'm honestly okay with it. GTA 4 is more focused on its story and its characters and just making the gameplay feel way smoother than it ever had before. No, you no longer have to work out or worry about maintaining a healthy diet. All you gotta worry about doing is your job as a scary ass European gangster. GTA 4 completely overhauled the controls and feel of the franchise and I think most of it holds up pretty damn well. The shooting feels smooth and weighty, you can really feel the impact of every bullet. This is also the birth of the Euphoria engine so not only did it feel good to shoot these goons, it also looked good as fuck. Like scarily good. The driving is kinda iffy at first but I really don't think it's nearly as bad as everyone makes it out to be. It definitely doesn't feel like a boat to drive around which is a comparison I've heard a lot and I think is a little ridiculous. It just takes some getting used to because the vehicles are way weightier than they usually are. They're obviously trying to go for a more realistic approach, but I understand why a lot of people don't like that. Because despite what a lot of people seem to think, realistic doesn't automatically equal more fun. At the end of the day, I'll always choose a fun video game over a realistic one, you know? And sure, the map is smaller, but it doesn't really feel like it. The world building is so strong that the city manages to feel alive. The exploring never gets boring because there's something new to see on every street corner. They did a spectacular job of making you feel like a confused foreigner who just wants a new start. Speaking of which, Nico Bellic is probably my favorite Rockstar protagonist of all time. The dude is so likable, man. He's funny when he needs to be, and he's scary when he has to be. He's relatable in the sense of representing the average unaware person who doesn't realize how hard achieving the American dream really is. Fuck. <laughs> But he's also not relatable in the sense that he's kind of a fucking bad guy. <laughs> like all that terrible shit he did during the war. When the war came, I did bad things. And after the war, I thought nothing of doing bad things. I killed people, smuggled people, sold people. And you don't worry about your soul? <sighs> after you walk into a village and you see 50 children all sitting neatly in a row against the church wall, each with their throats cut and their hands chopped off. You realize that the creature that could do this doesn't have a soul. This thought lingers in the background of the player's head just like it does Nico. He just wants to move on and be happy, but his past won't allow it. For the first couple hours of the game, Nico will probably just seem like your average stern angry gangster guy, but there's so much more to him. And as the game plays out, they slowly peel back the layers of his dark, rotted onion mind, showing us small doses of who he really is at the time. I think it's intentional that Nico looks like the most average video game gangster ever, when he's really one of the most intricate. At at the beginning of the game, Nico is just a dude on your screen, but by the end, he's your best fucking friend, alright? I would die for this man. And aside from him, you have Roman, who's super underrated, might I add. Yeah, he might be annoying, but did you guys know that you could just put your phone on fucking mute and you won't have to deal with him? That's something you can actually do in this game. <laughs> you also have Patty, Dwayne, Johnny. We don't talk about that one. <laughs> and who could forget that absolute piece of chuckle fuck shit, Dimitri? The dude doesn't get nearly enough credit, he's honestly one of my favorite antagonists in the entire franchise. Hell, he probably is my favorite antagonist in the franchise, and like, all of Rockstar as well. He's one of those dudes who gets close to you before inevitably betraying you, like what happens in every single one of these fucking games. Sometimes that twist can be shocking like a big smoke, but sometimes it's kinda not, like with Lance Vance. You know what I mean? The dude just has a strange vibe about him, and the same goes for Dimitri. He's all buddy and buddy and let's work together. 
but right away you can tell he's just kind of using you. But the difference between him and someone like Lance is that the game never really tries to get you to like Dimitri. And they don't gradually reveal to you that he's a bad guy like they do with most of the other people. Instead, they gradually show you just how bad he is, starting out pretty bad and getting fucking terrible as the game goes on. He's a genuinely sadistic monster who takes joy in causing others pain and stomping on his enemies. The dude's petty, manipulative, condescending, and all the bad big words. Dimitri is really interesting in what he represents. Him and Nico aren't that different. Dimitri is basically what Nico will become if he loses track of himself in his journey for the American dream. Dimitri is what happens when you reject the good things you already have in your life like the family and friends you've made in favor of this life filled with power, money, and fast cars. A path that the player has been already going down without even realizing it. Deciding to kill Dimitri or not is the final decider on where your morals lie. Are you doing all this terrible and harsh shit in order to make a better future for you and your loved ones? Or are you really just in this for yourself? Just continuously chasing down the dream of more and more power. And putting his ass down for good feels so damn satisfying. Of course, there's other villains like Jimmy Pegarino, but but he's more to represent the ugly truth of the American dream itself rather than to be his own character. He's just kind of a scary mobster guy. But not everyone is an asshole, don't worry. You have people like little Jacob, aka the coolest and nicest motherfucker in the entire city. Things I would do just to share a joint with this man is crazy. <laughs> Honestly, this dude's probably partially the reason I smoke weed now. He just made being a stoner look so goddamn cool. This man was blazing up in the middle of a fucking helicopter chase, and then he shot a goddamn and hella got down the sky for rocket. So you heard it here first, folks. Rockstar Games indoctrinates children into becoming stoners. Speaking of things I like to get stoned while doing, <laughs> this game's DLC was pretty fucking good. I love the rich, fancy club life we see in Louise's story. He's also a pretty solid protagonist, too. But I just love the biker side of the story with Johnny's dumbass last name, Clevitz, here. Why don't more people talk about this? This is the closest thing we'll ever get to a GTA biker simulator. Ripping fucking pieces, man. Literally, there's bits of him everywhere. Even in Trevor's shoe, that's pretty fucking nasty. <laughs> I swear on my life, if this game doesn't get some kind of remaster, I'm gonna fucking lose it. You guys did Red Dead a few years ago. Please, just give me this. I don't even care. Just rip it and put it on the new consoles. I don't even need it to look better. I just want it bad. You might be asking, why not just play your original copy of it? Well, I do. But the main problem with that copy is, every time I start up a new campaign, I encounter a very rare glitch that I've only ever seen a few people talk about on the internet, where after like, mission 80, it just stops. It just stops giving me new missions no matter what I do, who I call, where I go, what side missions I do. It just stops the campaign. And it pisses me off every fucking time it happens. Which is why I wanted to be on newer consoles because it'd be just so nice to have this easily accessible and ready to download, you know? You can play so many old Rockstar games for pretty cheap on current consoles and they even add the first Red Dead like I said. So just give me GTA 4, please. This is one of those games I've gotten very little love from Rockstar since it came out. Hell, most of their games are like that but this one in particular it's not hard to get anything like gta liberty city stories is but if you don't have a pc strong enough you'll need to whip out the old ps3 or xbox 360. every time i think about this game i think about that first time i played it again just so fondly and if the only negative i can pull out of the game when i replay it is my copy is broken then you know you have something special GTA Chinatown Wars was a 2D game that came out a year after GTA 4 and in between the releases of that game's DLC, so yeah, it wasn't that successful. <laughs> Made for the Nintendo DS, I'm not fucking joking. <laughs> and also one of Rockstar's last attempts to go mobile before dumping a bunch of the old games onto your phone. <laughs> and this, this is when these 2D games really had their shit figured out. I kind of wish that more people had played this game because I can only think of like a few people I've ever met who have also played this. A lot of fans just completely ignored this one as they assumed a DS GTA game would kind of suck and I don't know if I could fully blame them for thinking this, but come on. Maybe you guys could have given it at least a chance. Since this game was originally made for the DS, there's a lot of touchscreen based stuff in it. When you steal a car, you have to hotwire that shit to start it. You collect drugs and have a fucking drug management menu that you can use to sell to random pedestrians. And that theme song just doesn't fucking lie. This game was during a time where Rockstar wanted to be known by fucking everybody. GTA 4 was their main cash cow at this point, but they still went ahead and made this shit anyway because they wanted their brand to be literally everywhere. Flash forward to today and they've basically gotten exactly what they want. You can can download GTA off fucking Netflix now. But back in the year 2008, this was a lot of clueless Nintendo kids' first experience of the franchise. 
And honestly, I think it's a pretty fucking good one. Driving feels a lot better than it did in the original top-down games, and the story actually exists here. There's actual characters and cutscenes. You don't just get a phone call and go, oh, someone's gonna die, okay, bye. It feels way more real than that. The story never fully clicked with me, though, unfortunately. I really tried to pay attention, but I couldn't bring myself to care about these characters very much. Which doesn't necessarily speak to the quality of this game's writing, but more to my own personal experience. But I did really like the comic book art style. It was very satisfying for the eyes. I was trying to read the dialogue, but I kept getting distracted by these fucking dope visuals. But that doesn't matter anyway, because the main appeal here, the main meat and potatoes, is the drug dealing missions. God damn it, I love this. This mechanic is so fun, why didn't they bring it back? You go out and buy or steal a small supply of weed, coke, or some pills, and then you have to manage that in your inventory before going off to make several deliveries all while worrying about the police the whole time. Sure, I guess you can kind of do something similar to that in GTA Online, but in this game, it wasn't just hop in the garbage truck and then go here. It was actually fun. And this is the first time I legitimately felt afraid of the police in this series because if they catch you, you won't just lose all your guns and ammo. No, you'll lose your fucking drugs and most of the fucking money you made selling them drugs. It sucks. <laughs> this definitely gives a lot of the gameplay a high feeling of tension. No pun intended. Well, in retrospect, yes, pun completely intended. And there's so many different ways to go about your tasks that you actually start to feel like a real criminal in a flat Stanley world. It's quite easily the best 2D GTA game in my opinion. But finally, after years of anticipation, in 2011 they gave us the first glimpse at GTA 5. That's kind of why I wasn't surprised when the GTA 6 trailer came out, it said 2025 at the end. They always release their trailers early as fuck, it's nothing new. But in 2013, GTA 5 released to the public and it was one of the most sold video games ever created and it's a fucking masterpiece. I know, I'm biased as hell, but I don't care man, I just think this game's fucking amazing. This rational man might think he'd been abducted by aliens. I think this is the first time I was really hyped for an upcoming game. I had been excited for new releases, but nothing had ever made me feel like this. And when I finally played it, I was not fucking let down at all. For a bit during my teen years, I had that weird phase where I hated this game's story, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. I even made an entire video essay on why I thought the writing was inconsistent, but I took that shit down because it sucked. <laughs> the only inconsistent thing was my ability to pay attention clearly because this is actually a great story. In fact, it's one of my favorites in the franchise. I think it's important to revisit things sometimes and admit when you're wrong, and I was wrong about GTA 5. Revisiting it last year, I had a fucking blast. It just felt as fresh and exciting as it did a whole decade ago when I first played it as a kid. I, I have very few gripes with this game, but of course there's some, so let's address them real quick. Some of this game's missions suck absolute ass. I didn't pay $60 to do fucking work, what the hell is this? And I can't stand how hand-holding the game can be at times. I miss being able to experiment and try new things, like in the old games. But the game does make up for its few boring and repetitive missions by immediately throwing you into something crazy in the next mission. This game has what I like to call the police problem, and what I mean is the police don't feel realistic at all. If you're escaping too quickly, they'll just fucking spawn right in front of you because I guess that's fair. I've always despised this mechanic. Even if you ditch your car and hide super well, sometimes the police will just have this third eye opening that's so fucking raven moment and immediately know where to find you. It's stupid. But other than that stuff, I fucking love this game. They took the already great map of Los Santos and improved it significantly. This shit almost feels like real life. The city is so alive and there's constantly stuff going on and different things to engage with. And you can even drive out into the middle of the fucking desert where there's a bunch of different small towns, trains, and a fucking military base. Fun fact, for like the first six years of my life, I lived in a place called Arizona City, which if I had to describe it, it's like a slightly bigger version of Sandy Shores. When you search Arizona City on Google, it doesn't even give you pictures of the right city at first. It's just like, here are cities in Arizona. I'll show you what it fucking really looks like. Here it is. You get exposed, Arizona City. But I love being out in the countryside playing as Trevor. It's honestly some of my favorite side content in the game. I love the bounty hunting, the racing, the biker killing lifestyle that Trevor lives. I can honestly play an entire game out of just this. I just wish there was more to do as the game went on though. It adds a bit of stuff, but there's not really a whole lot of incentive to come down here in the later parts of the game, which kinda sucks because I fucking love this environment. And I can't stress enough that this game's attention to detail is fucking stellar. Sometimes I just like to drive around or even walk around the city and let myself become immersed in the world. It holds up so well compared to modern games like Saints Row 5, which is 
big, sure, but it feels lifeless and empty or cyberpunk. Not even having cars on the road most of the fucking time. I've been playing this game for 10 years and I've only ever encountered a handful of crazy glitches. It's insane how well this game runs even today. Nobody does it quite like Rockstar Man, like literally who the fuck else could have made something like this for the Xbox 360. Aside from the general jank that the series has become known for, I think GTA 5 easily has the best gameplay in the franchise. The driving is so smooth and responsive, the shooting is simple yet satisfying. Pair that with the Euphoria engine and the cool little filter that happens when you kill people, and suddenly murder becomes fun. The heists are so fun to plan and execute, there's so many little details that can change depending on how you plan it which feels so realistic and adds a lot of replay value. It blew my mind as a kid to see how you could seamlessly switch between character to character and I still think it's pretty impressive. I love randomly switching to Trevor and finding him half naked stranded on some island. <laughs> it makes these characters feel so real, almost like they existed independently of us. And they all have these cool unique abilities, Franklin in particular has saved my ass on many occasions. Speaking of the characters in this game, they have some of my favorites in the entire franchise, the trio, are all different and unique enough but connected in so many different ways. They all have their strengths and many faults but they're so flushed out and interesting that it's hard not to love them. Trevor might genuinely be one of my favorite video game protagonists of all time. At first he seems like your standard crazy shouty guy but as the game goes on you see many different layers of the man. Many, many different layers of this onion. <laughs> A lot of people were mad as fuck at his introduction scene because you know, and myself included, but I've since come to terms of it because it's honestly a really fucking cool introduction. The whole point of it is to immediately show to the player that this dude is a big fucking deal. He just shows up, fucks a girl while drinking a beer, and then brutally murders the last game's protagonist. It's like he's literally saying fuck the old shit and with the new. <laughs> I saw a comment on a video recently that went like this. The man who infiltrated the prison, killed many guards on the way out, and rode away on his bike gets killed by a bottle. Which, nah. I don't think the bottle's what did it for him, fam. But this also further proves my point. Trevor just killed what used to be a fucking badass scary biker with his boot. Franklin, while kinda underutilized at points in the game, is probably one of the most grounded and relatable characters in the entire franchise. He basically acts as our window into this insane world, and at times seems to be the only normal person in the group. If not for him, Trevor and Michael would never get shit done, ever. He's also just chill as fuck, I would definitely hang out with this dude in real life. I just know he's got some good ass bud too. <laughs> Michael is like the biggest fucking asshole at points and is insanely selfish, but the dude has so many layers and is legitimately hilarious. He often finds himself in whack ass situations all the time and just sarcastically jokes and shoots his way out of all of them. He also sees the most character development of all three protagonists, going from a stuck up prick in the beginning to a slightly less stuck up prick at the end who's trying to get better anyway. He shows us that just because someone has done a lot of bad shit, it doesn't automatically mean he's some kind of heartless monster. I could get all deep and analytical, but I would honestly just recommend watching the Leadhead video from a few years ago. I think that's genuinely one of my favorite video essays ever made. Or you could check out that super crazy well-researched Dark Viper AU video where he does like an entire deep dive into the lore of Michael. These characters are dope as hell, but they're even better when brought together. Sure, they're not necessarily great people, but that doesn't matter or you're still gonna save their lives anyway. I know it, asshole. Speaking of which, the three endings are so memorable and so well written that no matter which one you choose, it would still kind of make sense in the grand scheme of things. There's not necessarily a right answer here even though everybody picks C for obvious reasons. It honestly just depends on how you personally perceive this story. Someone could see Trevor as the sadistic murderer and a liability, so it's understandable why they would want him dead. Other players would take note of the fact that Michael's essentially just using them and decide to kill him, which is also pretty understandable. But most will decide to say, fuck all that, I'm just gonna take the system down directly, which also fits this game's themes, since the entire plot was basically about them going against the system and proving that things don't have to be done in a particular way. It's not even just them, the side characters are also amazing. Lamar is one of the funniest dudes in the entire series. Lester's a weird ass dude, but his sarcastic nature just feels so welcome amongst this group. He's also responsible for like everything working out the way it does so props to him for that I guess. And who can forget Wade, Tracy, Jimmy, or fucking Packy? What the hell are you doing here man? Go back to Liberty City. <laughs> and the villains might be generic but I think that's kind of the point. These dudes are meant to represent the rich dweebs who think they're the coolest fucking people ever. Devin Weston might not be as intricate as well written as someone like Big Smoke or Dimitri but he definitely sticks with you. I could go on and on about this game and I probably will at some point but for now I'll just say this game's fucking amazing and I highly recommend giving it a replay if you haven't in a long time. It's really worth it, man. Reported and recorded to GTA Online, Banhammer, RockstarGames.com, and I'm contacting my PSN rep to have you both PSN console banned and character wiped in about 
24 hours. I have a lot of opinions on this game, I guess. <laughs> Only a month after GTA 5 came out, GTA Online was released and has been Rockstar's vain cash cow for the last decade. Some GTA retrospectives I've seen exclude GTA Online for understandable reasons, and I was originally planning on not covering it either, but honestly, man, I've kind of been getting into GTA Online again lately, I can't even lie. I've just been fucking around and trying new things I've never done before, like going to war with the hippies over a bunch of acid, or raiding a fucking meth lab under a chicken farm with some Breaking Bad shit. <laughs> I don't think I could even begin to list all the problems that GTA Online has, but I'll at least complain about a few of the main things before I talk about why I still like this game. First of all, fuck the pay the win mechanics that are implemented into the game. I think it completely takes away from the appeal and main point of the fucking game to just let people buy money. <laughs> the whole appeal of GTA Online, or at least to me and many others, was the idea of starting out with nothing and gradually working your way up the food chain. To be able to buy half of the shit right out the gate is way too fucking simple and makes this game feel hollow and boring. If you do this, why? No, like legitimately, why is this game fun for you at this point? And it's not like Rockstar needed to implement this or anything. They aren't fucking hurting for revenue, I can assure you that much. And this kind of goes hand in hand with what I was saying, but I really don't like the futuristic, crazy ass, expensive, insta-kill garbage that the game is filled with these days. The oppressor is the definition of overpowered. If you legitimately rely on this thing to finish a job in the game, then you're kind of a pussy, I'm sorry. I understand why it's fun, don't get me wrong. If this was in any other game, it would be amazing. But I'm tired of having my sessions just straight up ruined by a bitter preteen who's mad that I barely killed him. And come on, am I really asking for too much just to get cross-platform already? I want to be able to play with my friends. And I know that they said it would make the game unfair for console players, but like I just said, the oppressor is a thing that actually exists in this game. It's already unfair. There's also a lot of missions that require you to work with other players, and that's usually fine if any of my friends are online, but sometimes I'm just trying to get shit done by myself. And now I have to rely on the help of some random 10 year old who will inevitably die and cost us our lives? The team lives thing really sucks in Heist too because if someone dies while you're out of lives, it's an instant game over for all of you. I understand why they have to do this, but I will always prefer those missions that just like make them spectate you if they die. Because I shouldn't have to suffer just because the teammate I was randomly paired with isn't very good. Sometimes you get stuck in these purgatory ass loops of doing the same thing over and over again. And every time you're about to finish, your teammate just dies or you eventually fuck it up. But if I leave the lobby, I'll get labeled a bad sport and then have to play with other bad sports, which is just kind of fucking stupid. I guess you can call me a terrible fucking sport then because I'm not spending the next hour of my real life time killing the same 10 enemies. I'm sorry. Oh, fuck, I don't know. I'm getting way too heated. This game's actually pretty good. I love the sheer amount of variety of shit to do here. You're kind of just thrown into this world with your gun and a piece of shit car and have to work your way up and doing various jobs. The character customization has always been pretty fun, even though it's kind of limited. I love how you can do the regular jobs that they provide all across the map, but you can also scroll through an almost endless list of player-made shit, like zombie survivals or races that look like this, Carmageddon and shit like that. All stuff that you'll probably recognize from those super loud gaming videos with the super bright thumbnails. Ah, my fucking eyes! Ah, what? I think they're bleeding. Shit, shit, who do I call? Sometimes it can be kind of difficult to find an active lobby while doing one of these, but if you got some friends to play with, it can be a fucking blast. A lot of the actual Rockstar made missions are pretty simple. It's like, go here and shoot these guys and blow up this and steal the drugs. Good job, here's $20,000. But when they get creative with it, it's simply amazing. The Fooligan plotline and the recent Cluckenbell one are easily some of my favorites. And I wish that they just had more stuff like this in the game. Most of the time you'll walk up to one of these initials thinking it's going to be a mission like this. And then it's like, hey, you got to buy a $6 billion fucking plan it before we can go into business together. The heists are pretty fun though if you can actually get people to do them with, like the KO Perico one for example, which is literally just fucking Far Cry 3. <laughs> you can start a biker gang, which is pretty exciting. You can even open a mobile acid lab nowadays, or a nightclub, which is the most obvious one to me because you can make so much goddamn passive income. <laughs> Early on in the game, there's a lot of variety to keep you from getting bored, but as you continue to play GTA Online, you'll slowly start to run out, and it will kind of just turn into fucking Amazon package delivery system later, which obviously isn't very fun. <laughs> but this game is still worth it for the moments that it can create with friends. Some of my favorite memories in any online game come from this, like dressing up as a shitty superhero named Blue Balls with my sidekick Red Wings and going out and protecting the city. We went through a lot of phases, man. Like right now we're some fucking 1980s Miami Vice ass gangsters. At one point we were mobsters, which is an idea I stole directly from a Smosh Games video. Comment down below if you also used to watch Grand Theft Smosh. I don't think I've ever met a single person who did. Whoa, you fell off the map for a second on my screen. Wee! Oh, oh. <laughs>
Oh, oh. But to cut myself off before we go any further, I've got to say, I've, while I've always disliked a lot of shit about GTA Online, I still think I'm probably going to keep playing it because of the memories that it creates with me and my friends. And there's honestly nothing else like this on the market. So while I do have a lot of problems, I guess all I can really say is I hope that they improve this going forward. I kind of hope that they just make us all start new again going into GTA 6, completely leave these characters in the past and make us have to start all new and from the bottom and just change up a lot of these problems that we've been complaining about for well over a decade now. <laughs> By the time that this video comes out, we'll probably only have like a year and a half to go before GTA 6 is released, which is pretty fucking crazy. Just thinking about that messes up in my mind, I can't even begin to imagine what this game will be like. And I'm sure it's gonna be fucking groundbreaking. Just look at Red Dead 2 and how stunning and intricate it was, and just imagine what that could mean for GTA 6. Imagine how great Vice City will look, especially after not seeing it. It's 2006. <laughs> I don't even want to go into the details about all my wants and desires because I honestly fully trust the process, man. There's a chance that GTA 6 could be my favorite game of all time and I'm so genuinely excited to get my hands on it. I haven't felt this hype for a game since, well, since I was a kid waiting for GTA 5. The future of this franchise holds so much possibility and promise and I can't wait to see where everything goes. I love you, Rockstar, and I love you, Grand Theft Auto. And I can't wait to see y'all in GTA 6 online.